Hello to all, I'm Brenner Templar and welcome back to War Thunder, where I'm here to answer a few questions and help you become a better bomber pilot or fighter pilot in War Thunder. In this video, I'll be showing you how to correctly dive in bombers, how to bomb accurately without a crosshair, how to use the gunners on your aircraft efficiently yet effectively, how to choose the right bombs for the job, and much more. So, let's get on to our first topic, which is diving in bombers. Now, when I say diving in bombers, you probably thought I meant, well, dive bombers, because that's sort of their name. But actually, dive bombing can be done in almost any kind of aircraft in the game. However, just not in the ways you might presume. Now, if you have any experience of playing air realistic battles on this game, then you're probably aware that what a lot of bombers do at the start of the game is dive in at full speed, bomb their targets, and then get out as quickly as possible. This is often criticised, and a lot of people look down on it, but in reality, it is actually quite an effective strategy, unfortunately. You see, the way a lot of maps are made, means that the only way the bombers can get to the targets to bomb is if they go in at full speed, because if they take time to climb or stay at altitude, the fighters will find them and take them down before they get a chance to even get close to the bombing zones. So that is actually quite a good tactic, simply because a lot of the time it's the only tactic you can do without getting shot down immediately. But in order to do this correctly, it is important that you learn the second part of this tutorial, which is the limits of your aircraft. Now, some aircraft in the game are actually designed, and thus are very effective, at turning at high speeds, and are capable of going at high speeds. However, some aren't as much, and it's very important that you know this before you start doing things like diving in at full speed, because if you overspeed, of course you're going to die, and if you try to turn too quickly, once again, you're not going to make it out, I'm afraid. Also note that most aircraft lock up their control services once flying um, much faster than their maximum speed limit. This means that they will be not only a lot harder to control, but also if you're going into a dive and you need to pull out of it quickly, if your control services are unresponsive due to you going too fast, you're not going to pull out of it, I'm afraid. Now, those more experienced pilots among you may be thinking to yourselves that you already know a lot of this stuff, and a lot of it you've either figured out yourself or has just become second nature to you that you've completely forgotten it's even a thing. And that's fine. But now, it's time to talk about something that you probably don't know much about. Well, you might, but a lot of people don't. And that is bombing without a crosshair. Now, some aircraft, like the A-20G, have bombs, but they don't have any bombing reticle. So, how do you accurately bomb targets if there is no reticle? Well, here's some tactics that i found over my time of playing the game that will help you get some not pinpoint, shall we say, but will make you a lot more accurate on your bombing. So, as you can see, trying to bomb from a decent altitude is, well, very inaccurate at best, and not to mention most of the targets you'll be bombing will be armoured targets such as pillboxes and heavy to, well, medium armoured tanks which means that you have to be quite pinpoint with your bombs, so that's no good. Now, the first tactic is, well, nothing new, it's quite literally just dive bombing. Now, dive bombing with aircraft such as heavy fighters, attackers, strikers, and of course, well, dive bombers, is ideal, because these aircraft are a lot more agile, and are capable of diving down and swooping back up again before their control services start stiffening or they crash into the ground. And of course, if you do not know how to dive bomb, it's very simple. All you have to do is to go, say, maybe a thousand odd meters over a target, fly down, and when you're about halfway towards the target and indeed the floor, drop your bombs and then swoop back up again pretty much as hard as your plane will let you, and get away before the bombs detonate. 
Alternatively, you could try grass cutting. Now, this is very simply flying as low as possible, as fast as possible, and then, when you get close enough to your target, you drop your bombs, and then you fly off once again before they detonate. Now, for this tactic, it is absolutely vital that you put your bombs on a timer, because if you don't, you're literally going to be only meters above a bomb that explodes. So you're going to basically blow yourself up if you don't, so definitely do that. Now, both of these tactics do rely on the fact of you having a rough idea of where the reticle would be on the ground if there was one, and this can only really be gained through experience. You see, the more you play with bombers and aircraft that do have a reticle on the ground, the more you will sort of get the gist of where they will be, depending on your speed, on your altitude, and various other aspects like that. But I can assure you that these tactics do work very well if used correctly, and as you can see in front of you right now, I am using the, my exact tactics I've just given you, and they work pretty well. The only other advice I can offer is dropping multiple bombs at the same time, rather than just dropping one at a time for, well, obvious reasons really. More bombs means better chance of hitting a target. So now I've told you various ways of how to bomb targets, it's now important that you find out how to get to said target or get away from them as we talk about gunners on the aircraft. Now, I have lost count on the amount of times I have seen pilots change to their gunner seats in aircraft such as the bow fighter, the JU-87s, and various other aircraft of the sort. But, I hear you cry, the AI gunners on this game are legendarily crap. They cannot hit a barn door at 10 paces, let alone defend me from enemy fighters. So what else am I supposed to do? Well, some aircraft, it's just better to stay in the pilot seat and try your best to evade and dodge and escape your enemy, rather than changing to your gunner seats and fly in a completely straight line and giving your enemy free shots on you. And this is what I'm going to get into now on whether or not the aircraft you're using is the correct type of aircraft to change to the gunner seat or not. Now, if you ask me, the three main elements you need to take into account before changing to your gunner seats is 1. The maneuverability and speed of the aircraft 2. The armament and the guns on the aircraft and 3. The armour on the aircraft and how well it can take hits. Now, Aircraft like the B-25 are not very manoeuvrable, however it can take hits very well and does have some very good rear defensive gunners. This means that it is the optimal type of aircraft to change to your gunners on if there is an enemy on your tail. However, aircraft like the Ju-87 are very manoeuvrable, but don't have very good defensive armament and can't take hits very well, so it's a lot better for you to stay in the pilot seat and try to evade and escape rather than changing to your gunner and, well, flying in a straight line and giving your enemies a free kill. So before you go into battle, look at your plane, look at the armour on it, look at the guns on it, are they high caliber, are they very accurate, are they high firing, are they worth your time or not, because if they're not, just leave them to the AI. If the AI get a hit, great. But it's far better that you leave the AI, who are extremely inaccurate, to pointlessly shoot at your enemies, rather than changing to that position and giving your enemies a free hit on you. Also, let it be known, there are some aircraft in the game that are good at all three of these things, like the already mentioned A-20G. This aircraft is really manoeuvrable, can take hits really well, and has some really good defensive armament. So that's the type of aircraft I would recommend changing to your gunners on. However, aircraft like the Year 2M are bad at all three of these things. It can't manoeuvre, its guns are completely obsolete at a 4.0 battle rating, and it's not very good at taking hits. In this instance, I would also recommend changing to the gunners. The reason being, if you can't manoeuvre, 
then you might as well change to your gunners and do your best because there's no other way you can win the fight and although the odds may be against you you might as well give it a go. Don't worry, we're almost done as we get to the fifth part of the right bombs for the job. Now very simply, this is quite a quick one. All it relies on is look at the map, look at what the objectives are, what do you need, what will be the best bomb for the job. If you're gonna go and hit some bases, choose the big bombs, choose the 1000 pounders or 1000 kilogrammers and the bigger bombs like that. However, if you're going to hit lighter targets such as tanks or pillboxes, then choose medium to light bombs, but of course get a lot more because of that, so then you can hit multiple targets and all in all get more kills than if you were to have bring, say, only a couple of big bombs. You see what I mean? And that's mainly all the tips and tricks I can offer you, however there is just a couple more things I can advise you on, such as, when you're in a bomber always avoid head-ons, bombers always have very lightly armoured fronts, and although your bomber may have loads of guns on the front of it, only attack an other aircraft head-on if it is a last resort, because most aircraft will only take them maybe one to two shots into your cockpit and you've lost your aircraft, so make that an absolute last resort. Secondly, always try to keep your enemies behind your bomber as much as possible. The reason being is because the rear of the bomber is often the best defended part with the most guns and the most amount of armor. Now, most fighters will try to attack you from either the sides, from above, or from below. And the reason is quite simply because not only are these the most lightly armored parts on a bomber, but also it is where there is the least amount of guns and defenses. So always try your absolute best to keep them behind you as much as possible. Also, if you're a fighter pilot, you can always escort these bombers. You see, a lot of bombers in the game, such as your Wellingtons, your Stirlings, your Year M's, and your Dornier 217s, are quite weakly armoured, and they would appreciate a little bit of an escort, or at least for someone to stay in their rough area. So, if enemy fighters do go for them, then you can step in, take out that fighter, and, well, you've bagged yourself an easy kill, and that bomber can continue to play, and preferably do a lot of damage. And lastly, keep your head on a swivel. No matter what you're flying, from a heavy bomber, to a strike fighter, to a heavy fighter, to an attacker, to anything of the sort, these type of aircraft are often considered the easiest kill, and most enemies will flock to kill you. So make sure that you're always looking out for enemy fighters and other bombers that may try and take you out because they see you as an easy target. And that's all I've really got for you for today. So if you like what you saw, then please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. It's always appreciated. And until next time, I say thank you very much and I'll see you then. Eight bombs and eight kills. Yeah, you can't complain with that.